Welcome to the webinar. I am Joyce Liu, Investment Analyst with Philip Futures. Today, I will be introducing the investment aspect of Gold Futures. Starting from the importance of investment demand, we will then move on to the sources of investment demand before wrapping up with types of investment vehicles. In particular, we will dive deeper into the Bursa Malaysia FGLD Gold Futures contract that started trading on October 7, 2013. Disclaimer, this webinar is for education purposes only and no part of this presentation should be taken as investment advice. Risk, appetite and investment objectives differ from person to person and it is recommended that you seek advice from your personal qualified financial advisor if you are uncertain of the suitability of investment. Goal demand, made out of five types of users, can be classified into three broad categories by purpose of use. First, fabrication use, made up of jewelry demand, the dark blue portion, and technology demand, the light blue portion. Second, investment demand, made up of bars and coins demand, the violet portion, and paper gold assets such as ETFs, the green portion. Lastly, official demand from central banks, the orange portion. Central banks only recently became net buyers of gold in 2011. Prior to that, they were net sellers of gold, contributing to supply instead of to demand. The largest demand sector is fabrication demand, contributing to more than half of total demand, whereas the most volatile demand is investment demand. As investment demand is the most variable portion of gold demand, changes in investment demand is most closely tied to gold prices. This chart illustrates how gold price is closely tied to investment demand. Gold price closely tracks the amount of gold holdings in gold ETFs. The chart plots gold price on the left axis and the amount of gold held in gold-backed ETFs on the right axis over the same time period. Gold price increases when investors are bullish on gold. At the same time, when investors are bullish on gold, they also put more funds into gold ETFs. Therefore, there is an explicable correlation between gold price and gold holdings in gold-backed ETFs. Unlike gold jewelry, gold bars and coins and other forms of physical gold investments, investors of paper gold assets such as gold ETFs and gold futures are usually in the market for only the short to mid-term, as funds can move in and out easily with little cost. Therefore, a change in sentiment and outlook of gold is most immediately reflected in ETF fund flows, as well as open interest and changes in net loans in the futures market. Back to gold ETF fund flows, Investors have been pulling out funds from gold-backed ETFs since the beginning of 2013. From 75.817 million troy ounces on January 3rd to 54.214 million troy ounces on October 29th, year-to-date outflow totals 21.6 million troy ounces or 672 tons or 28.5%. The steepest decline coincided with the two large plunges in gold price in April and June, and there are signs of slowing outflow since mid-August. Now gold price is to a large extent determined by changes in investment demand. But where does investment demand come from? There are four main sources. First, Gold as a hedge against dollar depreciation. Gold is a currency, both historically and now. Historically, from 1944 to 1971, it was the ultimate currency, as all other currencies were pegged to the US dollar, and the US dollar was pegged to gold, 
in a ratio of one troy ounce of gold to thirty five US dollars. However, on August fifteenth, nineteen seventy one, the then US President Richard Nixon unilaterally announced to the world that the US dollar will no longer be pegged to gold, and gold became very much like a free floated currency since then. Today, gold is approximately one thousand three hundred and twenty dollars per troy ounce. So yes, gold is a currency, but unlike other currencies, it does not belong to one particular country. The implication is, its value is not directly tied to the central bank policies of one particular country in the world. That being said. It is still affected indirectly, just like any other currency. So, for example, in the Euro USD rate, if Euro depreciates, dollar appreciates accordingly. Similarly, when a currency depreciates, the value of gold in that currency appreciates accordingly. Since the benchmark prices for gold is priced in the US dollar. Gold is commonly used as a hedge against dollar depreciation. This is the first source of investment demand, hedge against dollar depreciation. Second, gold is also used to hedge against inflation, and this comes from gold's unique characteristic of being both a commodity as well as a currency. There are two major types of inflation: demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. In a nutshell, when price of goods in the economy rise in general due to higher demand, gold price rises along with other commodities. This is demand pull inflation. When price of goods increase because the cost of raw inputs increase, price of mining gold also rises. Forming a higher price floor for gold, this is cost push inflation. So the value of gold increases during times of inflation. But because gold is also a currency, its increase in value becomes a hedge against inflation, as the same piece of gold can now be exchanged for more money. This is the second source of investment demand, hedge against inflation. Next, gold is used as a hedge against crisis events. Gold is also a safe haven asset because it usually performs steadily during high risk events that cause most other financial assets to tumble. This is because gold carries little or no credit risk, since it usually does not involve borrowing. In addition. It does not have concentrated political risk in one particular country. For example, during the U.S. subprime mortgage crisis of 2008 and 9, the S&P 500 index lost about 50 percent of its value, while gold prices held steady relatively. At its worst, gold lost only 15 percent. Not fifty percent, and it quickly rebounded and reversed losses to gains. So gold is used as a speculative hedge against dollar depreciation, inflation, and crisis events. These three are usually event triggered. There is yet another source of investment demand for gold, that is, to diversify. Portfolio risks. Many financial assets perform similarly under similar macroeconomic, financial, and geopolitical conditions. For example, stocks, whether healthcare, industrial, energy, or financial stocks, and commodities and real estate, all tend to plunge in a downturn. For another example, when the U.S. dollar appreciates. Most USD-denominated assets decline, 
But gold doesn't necessarily plunge or decline in these situations. In fact, sometimes the opposite happens. Gold price does not move in tandem with other financial assets most of the time, and this is a desirable characteristic for investors who wish to diversify their portfolio risks. Having said that, how can we invest in gold? It is not difficult to invest in gold. There are four common ways investors can express their opinion in the gold market. First, we have gold mining stocks. They are stocks of companies that mine and produce physical gold. Stocks of these companies can potentially give excess return over and above the return on gold prices, given rising gold price environment. However, when gold price is on the decline as it is now, mining stocks tend to underperform disproportionately. As an illustration, companies can go bankrupt without gold price dropping to zero. Therefore, the performance of gold mining stocks have many other considerations apart from gold price, and they typically do not track gold prices closely. In fact, the high fixed cost structure of the mining sector makes mining stocks more volatile than gold price. Second, and a favorite avenue of investment among Asians is through ownership of physical bars and coins. They come in small affordable amounts and its tangibility gives investors the sense of security. However, it is actually a very expensive way of owning gold because there is typically a 5 to 15% premium over the spot gold price. This premium, we call physical premium, also highlights two concerns of investing in physical gold bars and coins, that it is relatively illiquid and market transparency is lacking. The implication is, investors may not be able to buy or sell the asset without price penalty. The third type of investment is gold-backed ETFs. Gold ETFs are very cost-effective, meaning the cost, whether interest or commission, of buying and selling gold ETFs is low. Furthermore, they come in small amounts and track gold prices closely. However, for investors seeking leverage or wanting to capitalize on a bear market without already owning a share of gold ETF, this is not a very viable option. The last and most common way of investing in gold market is through gold futures. Like ETFs, gold futures are very cost effective and they track gold prices very, very well. It also provides leverage through the margin mechanism and allow investors to short sell in a bear market without incurring finance charges in many cases. However, gold futures typically come in large denominations. For example, the benchmark COMEX gold future has a contract size of 100 troy ounces. So the value of one contract at current prices is about 132,000 US dollars. This is why the new Busa Malaysia Gold Futures contract is so attractive. The Busa Malaysia Gold Futures contract, the FGLD contract, comes in a very small contract size of 100 gram. This is more than 30 times smaller than one COMEX gold contract, making it affordable to even small investors. In addition, smaller contract size usually correlates to higher liquidity as investors need to buy more contracts to invest in a certain amount of gold. Therefore, increasing volume traded and potentially 
also narrowing the bid-ask spread. Indeed, in the first month of trading, average daily volume is more than 420, while open interest seems to fluctuate around 600 lately. This is quite successful for a new contract and the liquidity generated, although not sufficient for trading during important events, is sufficient for a normal trading day. Another advantage is its delivery method. Delivery is by cash settlement, so investors can reap profits from moving gold prices without worrying about unintentional physical delivery and the storage charges thereafter. We observe that, so far, the FGLD contract has been tracking the spot gold price rather closely after conversion into USD per troy ounce. As such, it is a good and affordable proxy to trading gold prices. We have come to the end of the webinar. I am Joyce Liu, Investment Analyst with Philip Futures. For more information on the risks and returns of trading gold futures or other types of futures, please approach one of our representatives. Thank you.